Welcome back, Engine Performance Expo viewers. Lake Speed Jr. I'm here with my buddy Jimmy Barton. We're here at Robert Yates Racing Engines. And all right, it's getting a little bit closer. So all the block work that's been done by Chris Straub and his guys, now it's here. So now it's time to put together the short block. We've already fit all our bearings on the mains. We've already washed and polished our crank. Uh, Randy Neal balanced the crank. Uh, we've got our bearings in. Got all our clearances wrote down and checked where we want it. We're fixing to install the crankshaft. Cam bearings are already in it. Plugs are already in it. Everything, progress. Everything's final washed. Uh, rods and pistons are over on the table. They're done. Uh, so we're basically ready to start putting the crank in it and setting in clearance and all. And of course, my favorite part is you know, we're going to file fit some rings here in a little bit. And yes, we still all, got all, all that kind of stuff. Rings. Oh yeah, so we got a power ring file. It makes it a little bit easier. We, we got we got to file the rings, and we've got to put get the camshaft when we get the cranking pistons in it, and finish all that up. But we should have the short block done here shortly. All right. So the good the good thing, like I said, we've already checked all the main bearing clearances. Right. Got the rod bearing clearances. All the clearances are kind of set, ready to go. So because yes. our job here is to get the short block put together so that we can then send it out to Ben Strader so he can put on the EFI system and all that kind of stuff. We can dyno it, then we can actually do the real fun part, which is hook up that procharger at some point and see what kind of wickedness happens. Because, you know, I, I, I don't, I'm not a boost guy. I've never done it. You know, you got a lot of history of boost. And we, uh, we're going to turn you into a boost guy. Turn me into a boost guy. Yeah. You, you know this guy's going backwards at 200 miles an hour at Bonneville. So if he that, says that's not that's not a good thing. No, but you have. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. It's you, you <laughs> you've expanded our horizons because you got some experience. So we appreciate you helping us out to get, you know, for me being a boost novice, how you get this piece put together to make the proper boost. I mean, even a little thing like having to hook up the crankshaft with an extra keyway slot in it, because the crankshaft wasn't for a blower, and who knew there was a blower crankshaft design well i mean you put two keyways on it so that it doesn't spin the hub on the crank i mean you know it's just one keyway is good two keyways is a little better, a little better. yeah uh, it'll still you, you put enough boost in it you'll still tear it off i think pretty much you put <laughs> enough boost in anything right a little, <laughs> little extra nice just a little extra boost it's gonna end in a bad day we don't want that to happen we're trying to try to avoid that yeah, so. but boost junkies are like anything else you know you you a, a little's the, better, a lot. Next, the a next little's hit. good, a lot's better. Yeah. Not necessarily. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm feeling pretty good about I mean, things like clearance in the block here. We've done a lot of little things to the block and try to make sure that our foundation is solid as possible. Right. And you got an eight counterweight crank in it. You got a shock absorber rod in it. Exactly. Bill Miller hooked us up with that. So we got some nice aluminum rods to be that. Shock absorber, like you said. Yeah, just depends on how much boost you want to blow in it. We're, we're going to try to start off easy. Uh, start now, ben, off. now, Ben may be a little more wide open than that. Say, no, no, no. Let's put some, that, put, that's, let's put, spin it up. But. That's the thing about a root style supercharger or a uh, pro charger, which you have. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is change pulleys. Yeah. Just spin it faster. Yeah. Well, hey, that's what it's here for. Exactly. Find, find out what the limit is. Sorry, right, so before we find out the limit, we got to get this thing put together. So let's get started on putting some parts together in our short block. Because we're using an eight counterweight crankshaft, we had to clearance the block. So fortunately, we had this Rottler F69 here at Robert Yates Racing Engines. And we were able to go in there and clearance the block so those two center counterweights will fit. Because it's going to be hard for that thing to rotate over if it won't clearance the block. So All right, we're just doing a mock-up from where we... Uh cut our block for clearance for the counterweights. And I've taken the thrust bearing out so the crank will move all the way forward and all the way backwards. So if I push it all the way forward to where the counterweights actually hit the two and four main or the one and five and rotate it and the counterweight don't clear, it's never gonna get that far forward unless it takes the thrust bearing out of it. Same thing on the rear, push it all the way back, make sure your counterweight don't touch where you've clearanced it you need a minimum of 50 thousandths, that's the general rule. On camshaft or rods clearance or you know to the side to block or whatever. So we're good there, so we're gonna take our crank out and uh, make sure we inspect everything one more time, then we're gonna put the crank in it for the final time. All right, so Jimmy's got the crank in the block, all the little 
prep work, little secrets and fine tuning. Which I, I love that stuff. I love those little details are so great. So that part's done. So now comes to my part where I've got to go ahead and file fit these rings. And because we're doing something a little bit different here, we're running not just a gas ported ring because the off the shelf pistons from Mala, they're super cool, but they don't have gas ports. And you want to use those gas ports to increase the ring seal. So guess what? No big problem that the pistons don't have gas ports. We can add it by putting gas ports in the ring, which we've done. Also, because we want to kind of creep up on what we're going to do boost-wise, and we're going to start off natural aspirated and then kind of move our way up and boost. Well, the more boost you run, the more power you make, the more end gap you have. Well, when you're not running big boost and you're not running the full power, you pay a price for that extra gap. Well, that's only the case if you're not running a gapless setup. So by running a gapless gas ported top ring, we can go ahead and set that end gap pretty loose so we're good for big boost, but we're not paying a penalty for that when we're doing the natural aspirated and the initial tuning and all that. We're safe, we're good, we're not gonna kill it with fuel, getting in the oil and do all that. So gapless gas ported and of course, hey, anytime you get pistons from Total Seal, you're gonna get an instruction sheet that's gonna tell you what that factor is. In this case, we're gonna use about seven thousandths per inch of bore size. So we're gonna be up over 30 thousandths gap on this thing because we're planning on making some big power, so we're gonna give it a little bit of extra room just to make sure. But again, not gonna pay the price for that because it is already a gapless package. That way, extra end gap, not paying the price. So I need to go ahead and shut up now, go ahead and start putting these things in the bore, find out where we are, use our handy dandy total seal power ring filer, to go ahead and get those gaps set up nice and easy. So while Jimmy's doing some work on other parts, I'm gonna go ahead and, and get these rings all put together, gapped out. One other little thing we decided to do too, because we're making some boost, we also bumped up the oil ring tension. So this is a one millimeter, one millimeter, two millimeter setup. So standard tension on a two millimeter oil ring is about seven pounds. Well, that's not gonna be enough for what we're doing. So I swapped out, added, got a little bit higher tension expander. That way we bump that oil ring tension up. And if we get, go a little higher than that, we always can do that as well. So a little bit of little ring tips and tricks here to make this thing run a little bit better. So again, I gotta shut up, get to work, make some stuff happen, try to catch up with Jimmy. So speaking of end gap, I said we're gonna run a lot of end gap. Well, how much is a lot? Well, in this application, we're gonna be trying to push maybe up to 30 pounds of boost, right? We're not gonna go all the way there. Like I mentioned, we're gonna kind of creep up on it. Well, one nice thing, Total Seal Piston Rings has a sheet. And it says, here is your gap factor. So we'll grab the handy dandy calculator, i.e. our phone, and let's check it out. So let's do the math here. So we know that our bore size on this engine is a 4155. All right, got that. Now, the end gap factor on this at 30 pounds to boost, or up to 30 pounds of boost, is seven and a half thousandths per inch of bore size. So, do a little times 0 0.0075. It's gonna come out right around 3116. So we're gonna round it up and call it 32 thousandths end gap is what we're shooting for. That way we know we've got plenty of gap if we decide to get a little bit crazy and spin that bore a little bit fast. But don't forget, with a gapless ring, you have to gap the rail as well as the ring. 
So Jimmy being the experienced, smart guy is, he came up with a little tool to help make that job a little bit easier because these rails don't have any tension. They'll fall right down on the bore if you try to check the end gap. So what you do, take a bigger, thicker, heavier ring, a 16th ring we can use. You can put it right in the bore, use our squaring tool to square it up. Now, We've got a good square ring that will hold the tension, so this doesn't just drop in there. Then we can place this ring in, square it on top of that. All right, now we got the cylinder bores clean. So next step is put in the quick seat, which is a dry film lubricant. As opposed to putting oil on the cylinder wall, which we don't want oil in the combustion chamber, oil also needs has viscosity, so it needs speed for it to be able to build that protective film to protect the rings. Well, during assembly, there's not enough speed. This dry film lubricant actually protects the rings and the cylinder bores during that assembly. And of course, when you once you crank it up, oil washes it away, so it's here for when you need it and not when you don't need it. So that's the great part about the quick seat. Plus, it's also an indicator. So if these, if I've done my job and these cylinder bores are clean, they should turn green. So let's put some quick seat on and see how, how good of a job I did cleaning these cylinders. All right, so we're now at the point we need to clean the rings before we put them on. Cleaning it may sound like a crazy idea, but as you can see from the cloth, there is still dirt on those things, and we don't want anything dirty getting in that ring groove and that can cause any kind of micro or anything like that. So what we're going to do is, these rings are actually uh, WS2 uh, coated, so it's a aerospace type coating that helps it. So all you want to do, we don't want to remove the coating, we just want to make sure it's clean. So we got that one done. And then on the second ring, because it's a Napier ring, also, I want to make sure we clean it too, just so it's actually maybe slightly deburred. If it was actually, you could feel it rougher, we actually get some uh, little piece of cloth right here like this, a little scotch bright, and we could actually deburr it if it felt really rough. These actually don't feel rough at all, so there's no need to do that. We just want to clean it up. They're black because they're phosphate coated, which is actually for break in. So we got these cleaned right here. And as I showed you before, the amount of gook comes. This is the oil rings. So just check this out. Just these things are all shipped with like cosmoline and things on because these are steel. So they don't want to rust, right? So you gotta make sure you get all the cosmoline and any kind of rust preventative off those parts so that all your break-in loops and stuff do it right. So all of that came off of just this. So that's why it's important to clean your parts. So Rings are all cleaned up, so now it's time for rings to go on the pistons, which we need to make sure we've got some assembly lube here handy by when we're done. So we don't want to put the pistons in the block without lube on them. But for assembly, definitely dry. Okay. All right, we got uh, our two millimeter oil ring. I always put the expander with the horseshoe down and line it up with the wrist pin on one side. Then I flip it over. And this is, a lot of people do it different. This is the way I do it. I always put my bottom oil ring one side of the pin mm -hmm. or the other opposite of my spring gap. Right. On the back side. Mm -hmm. so I got one on right side of the wrist pin, one on the left side of the wrist pin, opposite each other. And just roll them in there and be sure they're it's good and free and turns. And then your second ring, which is your Napier. Mm -hmm. If you have a dome piston, you need to put it on and spread it. it yep. With a because if you twist the ring, it's not going to be good for it if it don't twist back. With the flat top, there's usually plenty of room to just roll it in the groove, keep it from scratching the piston. Make sure that it's in there. Make sure that it's below the surface of the 
Pistol. Really important. Yeah, that you've got to have enough back clearance. If that thing's standing out, it's not going to be a good day. You have to have back clearance. Now, we have a total seal top ring on this one. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter where the ring grooves go on the top in a second when you get them on there. Put my main ring on. I flip opposite of that. And I put my total seal ring on exactly opposite or close to it. Opposite of the ring gap. Exactly. That's really important. So both of them have been gapped. That's important thing to remember. You have to gap the gapless rail. So, like I said, they need to be 180 apart in terms of the gaps. Because even though we call it a gapless ring, it actually has two gaps in it because there's two rings. And then make sure that it fits in the groove nice. But they're kind of hard to get on there to start with. All right, so now we got the gaps in the rings. Now, this is the opposite of what everybody will tell you. I do them a little bit different, and I have a reason for it. Uh, I turned my second ring toward my exhaust side of my piston at the wrist pin, which is not what people tell you. My main gap on my top rail I'll turn to the intake side at the wrist pin because the piston rocks in the bore this way and if you got the gaps over here and you accidentally left a rough edge on it which you're going to deburr it but if you accidentally left a rough edge on that ring and the piston rocking it will scratch your cylinder if you put it at the wrist pin it doesn't rock like that right exactly so that's why I line them up with the wrist pin and I put the Second ring with the exhaust port because it's the hottest when it first cranks up. Exactly, yep. So I line up with the other. Now, that being said, when I first put them on there, I take your assembly lube, which we have over here, mm -hmm. because we've got it dry right now, and the oil ring can stay dry. It'll pick up plenty of ring off the cylinder wall. And I just fill the groove up right where the gap sat. Mm -hmm. Then I rotate the ring in the piston until you can push it out and it's fully oiled all the way top to bottom. Right. On top and the second, then put your ring groove back where you, where we want it, at the, where I want it, at the wrist pin. Mm -hmm. And that's on the exhaust side. and the intake side and then that ring is ready to go in the bore. Now before you put it in the bore we don't use a lot of oil. Uh, Lake has already put some stuff in the bore. I put one drop on the skirt. This is the key right here. I put one drop on the skirt. Not a lot. One drop's all you need. Rub it into the skirt. And that piston is ready to go in the ring sleeve and slide in the board. Just like that. That's it. That's all it needs. Not too much, not too little, just right. Goldilocks and the Three Bears is a lesson for life. It definitely applies to engine building. So that way you don't have oil running off the table on the floor. Yeah, you get some everywhere, but that's part of it. Just part of the deal. So. We're going to move on and finish putting these rings on, then we'll be ready to put pistons in the Drop bore and in the hole. Torque the rods and stretch the bolts. If you ever have a question on a ring, usually the marking side is the upside. So markings go up if it's an inside bevel ring. Uh, on the top ring, the bevel goes up. As a second ring, bevel goes down. You want the bevels apart from each other. This is a neutral ring, but there is a napier on it, so the napier goes down. We also have a gas-ported top ring, which I'm not sure if you can see the gas ports there. They go up. Don't want the gas ports down, so...
So we've got the pistons, rods, all that stuff in there, torqued, inspect, and checked. Last thing we gotta check is how that, far in the hole we are, right? Got, yes. Pistons are 15 to 16 in the hole. We okay. have a 50 thousandths head gasket. Gives us uh, 65 piston ahead. 60 is the minimum all right. for the aluminum rod. So we should be good to go from there. Awesome. So at this point, we know we got everything right with the rotating assembly. So now we gotta wait for our camshaft, valve train, and all that. So we'll come back with another video of me and Jimmy putting in the valve train and getting it all wrapped up so we can send it out to Ben Strader so he can put on the EFI system and all that, and then we can start making some noise. So thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned for the next one. What a day, what a day. What a day. Uh, yeah, my, brain, my brain is swollen. I've learned so much today. They told us, don't start cars. We are not going to listen.